Welcome everyone to part two of this tutorial series where we are creating this summer beverage in Blender. So this is where we left off in part one. So if you haven't watched part one, then definitely check it out. I'll have a link in the description to the tutorial playlist. And as I said in part one, if you'd like to help support me and this channel, then you can purchase the tutorial files on my Gumroad store, and you can also get access to the project files on my Patreon page. And then one more thing before we get started, I want to give a huge thanks to this video's sponsor, Sketchfab. On Sketchfab, you can upload, buy, and sell 3D models and assets. My favorite feature of Sketchfab is that you can preview 3D models online in your browser. You can also purchase models and assets from Sketchfab's model store. You can use the model inspector to preview the wireframe, mat cap, textures, and more before you purchase. Check out Sketchfab with the link below. All right, so to start off this part, we are going to be creating the ice cubes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Shift S and I'm going to hold down the Shift and S button, move my mouse over to cursor to world origin and let go just to make sure the 3D cursor is in the very center there. And that way when we add objects, they'll be added in the center. So I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to go here to mesh and I'm going to add a cube. So I want to just kind of bring the ice cube over here. So I'll press G to grab, just kind of stick the ice cube right about here. And then I'll press S and we're going to scale that down. And then I'm going to press the period on the numpad and that is going to zoom me over to the cube. And then I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode and I'll press S to scale. Let's scale this on the Y axis and I'm just going to scale this up like that and then just click to place it right there. Now I want to add a displacement on this ice cube just to make it a little bit lumpy and bumpy. So to do that, I want to first subdivide it to give it more geometry. So what I'm going to do is press control R. Control R is the shortcut key to add loop cuts and then I'm just going to scroll my mouse and I'm going to scroll my mouse maybe to about there it doesn't have to be perfect and I'll just left click and right click just to add those vertices there and then I'm going to do the same thing for this side so I'll press Control R and I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel just kind of subdivide this um, and then I will left click and right click and then I'm also going to do the same thing up and down so press Control R and I'm going to scroll with my mouse wheel just get it about even it doesn't have to be exact and then I will left click and right click so we now have more geometry and so we'll be able to displace the object better. So to displace this, let's go right over here to the modifier properties and I'm gonna click on add modifier and I first actually wanna add a subdivision surface just to give it a little bit more subdivision. So I'll give it a subdivision surface and if I tab to go into edit mode, because we added these loop cuts right here, it's not gonna be super round. It's just gonna be a little bit round on the edge there and that is what I want. And then on the levels viewport and render, I'm gonna just turn these both up to two and then you can see that it's, it is a little bit blocky so using the object context menu, we can just shade this object smooth. Let's press Control S to save the project. All right, so now to displace this, I'm going to click on Add Modifier, and we're going to go under Deform, and I'm going to add the Displace Modifier right here. So let's just add that. Now, right now, the Displace Modifier doesn't have any texture to actually displace, so I want to click on New right here to add a new texture. And then to add in the texture, I'm going to click right here on this little button there, and that's going to take me over to the texturing panel. Now, we could add in some sort of texture, but I want to use a procedural texture. So on the type here, I'm just going to click on this and I'm going to change it to clouds. And you can see now we have this nice cloud texture and it's bumping out the ice cube. Now this is a little bit too small so I want to scale it up a bit. So on the size here I'm just going to maybe change this to like a 0.3. That is much better, just like a 0.3. Now it's still way too strong so I'm going to go right back over here on the modifier properties and then I'm going to go to the strength here and I'm going to hold down the shift key as I drag the strength value to make it much smaller and I'm just going to make that very very small and I'm I'm actually going to type in a strength value so I'm going to use a strength value of 0.1 that looks pretty good and then real quick I'm going to hop back over to the texture properties and I'm actually going to change the scale again so I'm actually going to make it a little bit smaller to maybe like a 0.45 I think that's a bit better. All right, so I'm now going to press S to scale and let's scale this down a bit. I can press G to grab and let's bring this down on the Z axis and just kind of stick it right there. Then I can press R to rotate. I'm going to rotate this on the Z axis and just rotate that over. And then I'll press the zero on the numpad just to hop into the camera's view. And I want to scale that down even more. So I'll press S to scale and G to grab. And let's just kind of stick this in here. I'll bring it down on the Z axis a little bit more and maybe just scale it down a 
little bit more. Let's press Control S again to save. And now I wanna add a material to this ice cube. So for this material, I'm gonna be using my procedural ice material. So if you wanna go and check out that tutorial, I will have the link to the tutorial in the video description. So you can do that procedural ice tutorial, and then I will show you how to add it into this Blender file. Or if you'd like to help support me and this channel, you can also purchase the procedural ice material on my Gumroad store. Again, I'll have the link in the video description. So now I'm going to append in the procedural ice material. So to do this, what we're gonna do is click on file and then we're gonna click on append. And then here is the procedural ice material tutorial files. So again, you can check out the tutorial with the link in the description, or you can also help to support me and purchase the procedural material on my Gumroad store. So I'm gonna double click on this blend file to go into the blend file and it's going to show us what we can append. So I want to go to the material and then I'm going Going to add the procedural ice cycles. I'm going to click on this and then I will click on append. So we've now added that material into this blend file. So I now just need to click on the ice cube and then let's go right over here to the material properties and then I'm going to click right here on the drop down and I'm going to add the procedural ice. All right, I'm gonna hold down the Z button, go up into the rendered view, and we can see how that's looking. And in the camera's perspective, I'm going to press Control B, and then I'm going to drag a box around that just so that it'll render much faster because it only has to render that area. And I'm just gonna zoom in and see how that's looking. Now you can see that the procedural ice material is scaled down a bit, so I wanna actually scale it up. So to do this, let's go right over here to the shading tab. And then I'm gonna zoom in here so I can preview the procedural ice. So what I'm gonna do is press Shift A, I'm gonna go to the search here and I'm gonna add a mapping node. Let's click on this mapping node and I'm gonna drop it right here. So the object coordinates will go into the vector and then on this mapping node, it's gonna go into both of these noise textures. So now I can bring this up here. So now what I can do is just change the scale of the mapping and that's going to change the size of the noise textures. So I'm just going to click and then I'm going to drag down on the scale values right here, and then I can drag back and forth and that's gonna change the scale. And then I can hold down the shift key if I wanna make my movements more sensitive. So I'm just gonna scale this down. I'm actually gonna click, drag down, and then let go. And then I'm gonna type in like a 0.4 and that is looking much better. So that is about the size that I want. I'm just gonna zoom out here and then I will press Control B. I'm gonna drag a box around the camera and see how that's looking. That is looking really good. All right, so let's go back over here to the layout now and then I'm gonna hold down the Z button and go back into the solid view. So I can now just select this ice cube and I will press the period on the numpad that's gonna hop me over to the ice cube. And then I'm going to press shift D to duplicate. And I'm gonna bring this over on the Y axis and I'll just bring it back here because I do wanna make two ice cubes. Then I can press R to rotate. I'm gonna rotate this over on the Z axis and just kind of stick it there. And then I'll press the zero on the numpad again, just to go into the camera's perspective. And I wanna press G to grab. And then what I wanna do is I want to hit shift Z and this way we'll be able to move the ice cube on the Y axis and the X axis but not the Z axis so I can just move it around and I want to stick it uh, probably just about there place it right there all right so there we go and then I actually think I want to bring it a little bit closer I'll bring it a little bit closer to that ice cube and maybe just bring it over a little bit all right let's go into rendered mode see how that's looking I do want them to be overlapping a little bit so something like that so I can hold down the Z button, go back into solid view and let go. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's press control S again to save. So I'm now going to select one of the ice cubes and I want to duplicate the ice cubes and put them in the drink. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna click right here and drag out and that's going to split the window because I wanna be able to move the ice cube around but then I also wanna be able to see it in the rendered view. So right over here in this 3D view, I'm gonna hold down the Z button, go up into the rendered view and let go. And then I'm gonna zoom in here to the drink so I can just preview the drink. I'll make this a little bit smaller. But then right here in the 3D view, I can just duplicate this and we won't be in the rendered view. So I'm just gonna select one of the ice cubes and I'm going to press Shift D. So Shift D will duplicate the ice cube and I'm just gonna stick it right in here. I think I might just also scale it down a little bit. I can also hold down the Z button and go over to the wireframe and let go just to see this in the wireframe so I can kind of see what's inside it. And I'm just gonna rotate this ice cube and just kind of stick it right here. And I'll, I guess I'll start at the very top 
top. So I'm gonna put some ice cubes right here, kind of floating in the drink. And you can also double tap the R key and that's going to enable the trackball rotation. I can just kind of rotate that. And then I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate. We're gonna duplicate this ice cube and I can just kind of rotate this ice cube, maybe put this one a little bit farther down, just kind of stick it over there. And then I'm looking right here to kind of see how it looks in a rendered view. And then I'll press Shift D to duplicate and I'll rotate this one. Let's kind of rotate this over and I'm gonna stick this one kind of right here, move it over there, maybe bring it up a little bit on the Z axis. So we're just gonna stick the ice cubes around and try not to have them overlapping. You can see those ice cubes are overlapping. So I'm just gonna double tap the R key, rotate that a bit more straight and then rotate that over, maybe rotate it over there. So just kind of play around with where the ice cubes are and just kind of get it how you like. What you can also do is just select the juice and then you can press H and H will hide the object and then you can kind of see how that looks in the solid view and just kind of push it up to the edge of the glass there and you can see this one is going through that so I'm just gonna bring this one over a little bit something like that is pretty good and you could make more ice cubes but I'm just gonna have three ice cubes I think three ice cubes looks pretty good all right so I can press alt H and alt H will unhide that juice object all right so I don't need this rendered view anymore so what I'm gonna do is hover my mouse right here in the corner when that crosshair appears when your mouse turns into the crosshair and I'm gonna cl click and hold my mouse down and then drag this way and then I'm gonna drag back and then let go and that'll close that extra 3D view there. Let's press Control S again to save and I now want to create the straw. So what I'm gonna do is hold down the Shift and S button and let's go to Cursor to World Origin and then let go just to make sure the 3D cursor is in the center there. And then I'm going to press Shift A, we're gonna go to Mesh and I'm gonna go right down here and add a cylinder for the straw. So I'm now going to press the tab key and that's gonna go into edit mode and I wanna scale the straw up a lot. So I'm going to press S to scale and then I'm going to hit Z to scale it on the Z axis and I'm gonna make this pretty big. And what I'm actually gonna do is type in a specific value. So I'm gonna type in three, zero and then enter. So we're gonna scale it by 30 on the Z axis. So now it is a very long straw. And of course it's way too big, but we will scale it down. Now I wanna delete the extra faces in here. So let's click right over here to go to the face select and I'm just going to select this face and then I can press X to delete and we want to delete the faces and then I'm going to navigate right down here to the bottom kind of zoom in there and I'm going to select this face and I'll press X to delete and I'm going to delete the faces all right so I'm going to press tab to go back into object mode and then I will press S to scale and I'm going to scale this way down just make it really really small make it much smaller so I want to make it about the size of the entire glass so if you press G to grab kind of bring this up. Um, and I want to make it about that big, so about the size of the entire glass. And then I want to put it in the glass, um, but we will do that a little bit later because I first need to create the materials and do some more modeling. So I'll press the period key on the numpad to hop over to this. So now we can orbit around the straw. Now I want to add a little swirly texture going down along the straw, and so I'm going to do some modeling for that. So what I'm going to do is press the tab key, and that's going to go into edit mode. And sorry, my screencast keys got turned off. Let me just turn this back on. There we go. All right. So what I'm going to do now is add some loop cuts in here and then we will twist the straw. So I'm going to press control R. Control R is the shortcut key to add a loop cut. And then if I scroll my mouse up, I can make more loop cuts, but I actually want to type in a specific value. So instead of just scrolling, I'm actually going to type in 200 so I want to add 200 and then I'm going to left click and then right click so that that hops back to the very center so we now have a very very subdivided straw and we're going to use this to create the swirly texture so let's press the tab key to go back into object mode and then to create that swirl there I need to rotate this around so we're going to be using a modifier for that so I'm going to click right here to the modifier properties and then I'm going to click on add modifier and I'm gonna go right here under deform. I'm gonna go down here and add the simple deform. So the simple deform is gonna deform the mesh and you can see that it's deforming the mesh in the wrong axis. I want to twist it on the Z axis. So right here on the simple deform, I'm gonna hit Z to twist it on the Z axis. So now if I take this angle here, if I zoom way in, if I 
take this angle and start to turn it up, you can actually see that it's twisting the vertices. And that is exactly what I want. Now, if I just turn it up to the max, you can see it is only 360 degrees. I want to twist it a lot more. So I'm actually going to click on the angle and I'm going to set a specific angle and I'm going to type in 4,000 and enter. So it's going to be a four with three zeros. So 4,000. So when we've done that, you can see it's very twisted and that's exactly what I want. But if I press tab to go into edit mode, we haven't actually applied this so you can see the geometry is still going up and down so in object mode I need to apply the simple deform so I'm going to click on this arrow right here and then I can click on apply you can also press Control a so now if I press tab to go into edit mode you can see that that is rotating sideways that's exactly what I want so we're now going to be creating two materials we're going to be creating a white material and then also a pink material of course you can create whatever straw color you want though so I'm going to tab back into object mode and then I'm going to go right down here to the material properties and actually let's just head over to the shading tab so we can use the shader nodes all right so i'm going to hold down the z button go back into solid view and let go and then with the straw selected i can press the period on the numpad and that'll zoom me over to the straw all right so with the straw selected i'm going to click on new and i can just rename this material i'm going to rename this to straw white so straw white so this is going to be the main color of the straw so I'm just going to make a basic plastic material. So on this base color here, I'm just going to turn this all the way up to fully white. And then I also want to make it pretty reflective. So on this roughness here, I'm going to change this down to like a 0.2. So it's pretty shiny and that's it. So it's just a very basic plastic material. I can hold down the Z button, go up into the rendered view to see how that's looking. And also you can see that uh, it's really sharp. So I want to just shade this smooth. So using the object context menu, I'll just shade the object smooth. All right. So now now what I want to do is I want to select the other loops and then we're going to add a separate material. So I can hold down the Z button, go back into the solid view. And to do this, let's actually go back to the layout. It'll be a little bit easier to do this in the layout because we have more space. So I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode and I'm going to click right here to go to the face select. So to select the entire loop of faces, you can hold down the alt key and then just select right there and make sure you are on the face select when you do that. So hold down the alt key and just select right there. And that is going to select the entire loop of faces. And you can see that it's giving us that swirly look. So what I want to do is I want to select 14 of these loops. So to select multiple ones, I'm going to hold down the shift and alt key and then just continue to select. And I'm going to select 14 of them. So one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I need to let go of the shift and alt button and just kind of navigate over here and then hold down the shift and alt key, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then two more, 13 and 14. All right, so now I've selected 14 of them. You don't have to select 14 of them if you don't want to, but I like that thickness of the swirl. So you can now see that we have all those swirls selected. So now what I can do is I can just add a separate material onto those faces. So now that they're selected, let's go back to the shading tab. And then what I wanna do is actually open up this side panel right here, and I'm gonna go over to the material properties. So I wanna create a separate material in the material slot. So to do that, I'm going to click on this plus right here to create a new material and I'm going to click on the drop down and then I actually want to add the straw white so I'm going to add the straw white so we now have the same material twice but I now want to duplicate this material and we're going to make it a separate material so to duplicate this material I'm going to click on this icon right here and that is going to duplicate the material but keep the same data so I can now click on this to rename it I want to make a pink color so I'm going to click right here on the base color and I'm going to make this a very bright pink color and then you can't see any of the materials so let's hold down the z button and go to the material preview and let go and we'll wait for that to load up now we still can't see that pink color but that's because we haven't actually assigned this material to those faces so click on the straw colored make sure that swirl is still selected and then you're going to click on the assign button and that is going to assign that material to those faces so i can tab to go back into object mode and there we go so we now have this swirly pink straw let's go into the rendered mode just to see how that's looking and I think I want to make the base color just slightly less saturated and maybe just a little bit darker because that is very saturated all right and there we go so that's pretty good we have this pink straw let's also make it just slightly more towards the blue so it's maybe slightly more purple all right so I can hold down the Z button go back to the material preview because I know that looks really good let's press Control s again to save so if I zoom in here to the straw you can see it doesn't actually have any thickness so I'm gonna go back over here to the layout 
and I'm gonna kind of zoom in here and I wanna give it some thickness. So let's go right over here to the modifier properties and I'm gonna click on add modifier and we're gonna go right down here and we are going to add the solidify modifier to give it just a little bit of thickness. So then you can hold down the shift key and drag the thickness value and I want the thickness value to be very, very small. It's gonna be very subtle because it is just a plastic straw so it will be pretty thin, but just something like that. And then I do just want to give it a tiny bit more detail. So let's also add the subdivision surface modifier. So let's click on add modifier and under generate, we are going to add the subdivision surface. And then right down here on the subdivision on the render and the viewport, I can just both set those to one. So I'm going to select the straw and I can press G to grab and R to rotate. And I'm going to stick the straw right there in the cup. And I don't want the straw to be going through any of the ice pieces. So let's just select the juice object and then I can press H to hide it. And you can see it's kind of going through. So I'm just going to select some of these, press R to rotate and G to grab. And I'm just going to move them over a little bit and also move this one over a little bit. Maybe move that back and then I can just kind of stick this down there. And I also don't want this to be going through the glass. So let's just bring that up a little bit. And then I want to rotate it and stick it right there so that it's just pushing against the side of the glass there. All right, just like that, that's pretty good. So I can press Alt H now. Alt H will unhide that juice. And I will also maybe rotate this, just bring it back a little. Let's press zero on the numpad to go into the camera view. And then I'm going to hold down the Z button and go up into the rendered view to preview how that's looking. And there we go. So we now have a straw going into the juice. And I think I'll scale it down a little bit and just stick it down there a little bit more because it did just seem a little bit big. All right, so I'm now going to add a depth of field to the camera. So just make sure you select the camera. You can just click right here if you're in the camera's perspective. And then let's click right over here on on the object data properties. And then I'm going to go right down here and I'm gonna turn on the depth of field. Now right here on the focus object, we can choose an object that we wanna focus on. So I'm gonna click right here on the eyedropper and then I can just select this object here, the glass object. So then to preview this, I'm going to hold down the Z button, move up into the rendered view and let go just to preview how that's looking. And then right here on this F stop value, we can change this value and that is going to change how blurry it is. So I'm just going to, for starters, I'm just going to drag it way down to 0.1 and you can see how blurry that is. That is a little bit blurry and I don't really want it to be that blurry. So I'll turn this up a little bit. So I'm going to turn the F stop value to a 0.3 because I do want the background to be pretty blurred, but then the other stuff here, like the ice cube and the glass, I want that to be in focus. So I'm going to hold down the Z button and go back into the solid view. All right, so I now want to create a little puddle of water to make it look like the ice cubes are melting on the hot day. So I'm going to press Shift S, hold down the Shift S button. We're going to go to Cursor to World Origin, let go of the Shift and S button, and I'm now going to press Shift A, and let's go here to Mesh, and I'm going to add a cube. So I'll press G to grab but I'm going to bring this over and then I will press the tab key to go into edit mode and I'm going to press S to scale and let's scale this down on the Z axis. We're going to make it pretty thin and then I will tab to go back into object mode and I'm going to press G to grab. Let's bring this down on the Z axis and I'll bring it down there so it's kind of going inside the plank of wood. So I now want to give this a subdivision surface modifier so it's very smooth. So you can just go right here to the modifier properties and add the subdivision surface but there's also a shortcut key for the subsurf so you can just press control 2 so I'm gonna hit control 2 so it's the 2 on the top of my keyboard and that is the shortcut key to add a subdivision surface now I actually want to add more levels here so I'm gonna turn up the render and viewport up to like a 3 so it's pretty smooth and then using the object context menu I'm gonna shade this object smooth and then I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I actually want to make this a little bit thicker so I'm gonna press S to scale and then hit Z to scale it up on the Z axis and I think I might scale the whole thing up just a little. All right, so now I can select some of these faces on the side here and extrude them out. So I'm going to select this face and then I can press E to extrude and I'm going to extrude this face out and then I will press S to scale and I'm going to scale this on the X axis and I'm just going to make that a bit thinner just like that. So right here I actually want to add a loop cut so I'm going to press Control R to add a loop cut and then I can left click and right click just to put it back there in the center and then let's click right back over here on the face select and I'm just going to select this face and I can press E to extrude. Let's extrude this out. Then I can press 
press S to scale, and this time we're going to scale this one on the Y axis, and we'll just scale that down. And then I can also select this face, and I'm going to press E to extrude, and I'll extrude that out. And then I'll press S to scale, and I'm going to scale this on the X axis, and I'll make that a little bit smaller. Then I can select this face right here, I'll press E to extrude, E to extrude, and then I can scale this again, and I'm going to scale this one down on the X axis, and I can also scale this down on the Y axis. Just scale that down like that. And then if you want to, you can press the seven on the numpad to go to top view. I'm gonna hold down the Z button and go over to the wireframe. And then I can click right here to go to the vertex select. So I can now press A to deselect everything. And I can press B for the box select. And I'm just gonna box select some of these vertices and press G to grab and just kind of move them around. Press A to deselect that. And I'll press B for the box select. Box select those vertices. And I can press G to grab and just kind of move those around. And you can just kind of play around with the shape of that water there. Hold down the Z button, go back into the solid view, and I think that is looking pretty good. Now I also want to add some little water droplets that have kind of separated from the big puddle. So what I'm going to do is press the tab key to go back into edit mode, and then I'm going to click right here to go to the face select mode. And then I can just select one of these faces, so I'll just select this one. I'm going to press shift D to duplicate. Let's bring it over on the X axis, and then I can scale the entire thing down, or We'll make it really small and I'll press the period on the numpad to zoom over to it. I'm going to make it a bit smaller and then I will also scale it out on the Y axis so it's more circular. So now I can press E to extrude and we are going to extrude that down, place it there. And then I actually need to recalculate the normals because you can see the shading looks a little bit weird. So I'm going to double tap the A key to select everything and then I can press Shift N and Shift N is going to recalculate the normals. So I now just want to select this little water droplet. So I'm going to press the L key with my mouse hovered over that droplet of of water and that's going to select all the linked vertices. So I can now press S to scale and we'll scale this up and then I can press G and Z and we're going to bring that down and then I can just kind of bring it over. So I'm now going to press Shift D to duplicate and R to rotate and I'm just going to kind of rotate this over and then I can also press the 7 on the numpad for top view and I can hold down the Z button, go over to wireframe and I'm just going to press the B key for the box select and I'm just going to box select some of these vertices and just kind of move them around to change the shape. And then I want to duplicate some more of them, so I'm going to press the L key with my mouse hovered over these water droplets. Press the L key, that'll select the linked vertices. And then I can press Shift D to duplicate, and R to rotate, and S to scale. And I just want to duplicate some of these around, just kind of make some random ones here and there. So I'm just going to continue to press Shift D to duplicate, and then R to rotate. And I'm just going to make more of these. Let's go back into the solid view, hold down the Z key, go back into the solid view. And that's looking pretty good. I do want to make a few over here. So again, I'm going to hover my mouse over this droplet and press L. That's going to select the linked vertices and I can press Shift D to duplicate. Let's bring it over on the X axis and then I can also press G to grab. Let's bring it over on the Y axis. Just kind of stick it down there. And then to play around with the shape of it, I can press the 7 on the numpad to go to top view. I can hold down the Z button, go to wireframe, and I can press A to deselect everything. I'll press B for the box select, just drag a box around those vertices, and then I can press G to grab, just kind of play around with the shape of it, just to kind of make it more random. And then I can also press the L key with my mouse hovered over that, that's going to select the linked vertices, and then I can press Shift D to duplicate, and S to scale, and R to rotate, and we're just going to stick some of these around. Alright, so that's pretty good, just one more thing that I want to do, I want to make them just a little bit smaller, so I'm going to press the A key to select everything in the edit mode. And then I'll press S to scale. Let's scale this down on the Z axis just to kind of flatten it even more. And then I can also press G to grab and bring it down on the Z axis just a little. So I do want it to be pretty flat. So that's pretty good. I will tab to go back into object mode. And then let's create a basic material. So I'm going to click right over here on the shading tab. And then I'll press the zero on the numpad to jump into the camera's perspective. And I'm going to hold down the Z key and go up into the rendered view so we can preview how that's 
looking. So just make sure you have the puddle selected and then I'm gonna click on new and I can just rename this material to water. And then this material is very simple. I am going to just take this transmission value and turn that all the way up to one. And then I'm just gonna take the roughness value and I'm gonna turn that all the way to zero. And that's it, it's pretty simple. So it's just a very basic water material, but I think it looks pretty good. And I do wanna take the base color and I wanna make that fully bright. But there we go, there is our basic water material. So it's just a basic reflective material that you can see through. So I'll just press Control S again to save the Blender file. And this is gonna wrap it up for part two of the tutorial series. So I hope you've been enjoying the tutorial series and thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to watch part three, I will throw part three right up there on the end screen. And I will also have the link in the video description when it's released. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in part three.